there's a little bit of, I guess, dissension, ever so slightly, in the way people view this. Is this a cause for concern, and where do you see that rate hike trajectory going? Good morning, Dom. Thanks for having me on the show. We're not surprised by Waller's hawkish commentary. The, almost every um, Fed official has really started to signal that we're the SEP is likely to be 5.5 percent, so we'll have rate increases through June. And that's not surprised me because the Fed focuses on lagging indicators. Um, the worst is CPI-U. That's about 12 months behind, at least on shelter. And they also focus on wages, which also tend to lag um, changes in goods prices. So we do expect the Fed to be hawkish, but as they're indicating, pause in the summer, which should set us up for a pretty major rally. So if that's the case, there's also been the, the, the argument being made in, in various camps about whether or not it's appropriate to pause, but then also the extent and, and the degree with which you do raise rates. Do you see at least a couple of more smaller, so to speak, 25 basis point, one quarter percentage point hikes over the next couple of meetings before we hit into that summer season? We do. We see three more. We think the SCP was effectively at the top end being five and a quarter. We think now we'll go to five and a half as we have gotten what we think is unreliable data in the first quarter because you have seasonal issues and weather influences and the lags I already mentioned. But nevertheless, that's the data they're going off. So we do think we're going to get one more increase um, than was uh, implied by the last SEP, and we'll get that data later this month. But as we, as I indicated before, we think the economy can withstand those hikes, and then inflation is dropping rapidly, really because of housing and energy prices, which are the key drivers of high inflation. Jay, that, that's a controversial take to have. The reason why is there are still so many folks out there who believe that there is a, so to speak, second wave of inflation coming. What makes you feel confident that the signs that you're seeing, either in the economic data or the market data for things like commodity prices, makes you feel as though this really is the peak in inflation and that we are decelerating in a quicker pace? Well, it's important to study the 70s. We think the Fed has learned all the wrong lessons from the 70s. There's a notion that they um, paused and that caused high inflation. But what they're ignoring is there was a 200 percent which is almost unimaginable, increase in oil prices in 79. And the other factor is there's a 5% bleed through of energy prices to core. So we think the combination of uh, about a 50% drop in energy prices, and I wouldn't ignore natural gas. Natural gas is down 80%. That will bleed through to core. Then you have housing, which is also dominant in CPI. So those are the two leading indicators Instead of focusing on what the Fed does, the lagging indicators, CPI-U is lagging. We have a, a different index, CPI-R, that incorporates housing prices. So those are the two dominant factors, um, housing and energy.